Hi there. Today we're going to cover crystal conflict overtime rules. These are probably the most important pieces of information in crystal conflict as understanding these will effectively increase your win rate. A really quick shout out to Hunley for becoming a Patreon member and being the best mod a mod can be for my Discord channel. Thank you, Hunley. Overtime in Crystal Conflict is a situation to where neither team has successfully taken the crystal to the other's winning spot. Overtime in Crystal Conflict happens at least 80 to 90% of the time in my own experience and my Discord's experience. Let's go over each situation and ways to approach each overtime rule. Now, of course, there are a multitude of ways, but this is just how I see it in my experience. First situation, your team has greater progress score. This means that you have taken the crystal farther than the other team. How you achieve this victory would be to keep all enemy players out of the tactical crystals ring for three seconds to win. So where you can improve here is understanding that this does not mean they have to be dead, just not located in the crystals ring. With this, we can make better tactical moves. Most here would understand this as if I just kill them, then they are not there, which yes, is true. But this might have the remaining opposing players use their guard ability until they come back, which you really don't want. But if other opposing players are running up, you can also stun them farther away from the crystal. For example, using Warrior's Primal Rend for a group stun for two seconds might just be what you need while your teammates finish off the last person in the crystal. Machinists especially can shine here in this first situation as they have a group knockback, which you can use to hit all the enemies outside of the crystal. Now, we know there's not a lot of communication that can happen as gameplay is so fast, but with more people understanding the rules and understanding their jobs, the general community will start developing unspoken roles for each job. So with this first situation, you might focus more on stunning and engaging enemies as they run up instead of trying to kill them all, which can be really difficult when they're in a group unless you're a samurai or machinist with your super op limit break i myself who play ninja has turned the tides when a lot of the opposing enemies were below 50 percent and i was able to practically kill the whole group with the ninja limit break which is one of my favorites now that you understand this situation you can see where your job might be helpful in making sure that you can be a benefit to your team situation two for overtime your team has lower progress score to achieve victory you'll need to increase your progress to greater than that of the opposing team to win this situation right here requires a different mindset you are basically on the other side of rule one here is where i use a very regular tactic the old bait and switch no matter what role I am playing, my main goal is to stay alive and make sure someone's in the crystal's ring at all times. I do play with ninja a lot, but most jobs in PvP have a jump back or gap closer and some type of teleport, so utilizing those will make your life a lot easier here. If we are at overtime and I see that my party's health is pretty high and I have below 4000 MP, I will usually jump back and use a standard potion to refill and get ready for battle again. Now you have to really be mindful of your party and how they're engaging, but but most of the time I can sneak away, use a potion real quick in order to re-engage and take some heat off of the other party members. It is really a battle of attrition as again, they're trying to keep you out of the crystals ring for three seconds so they can win. So utilizing any jump or stun in order to re-engage is really important. It will be even more important at this point of overtime to focus down the same or low HP DPS jobs or healers. Tanks are pretty difficult to kill if they know what they're doing and don't be afraid to throw out your guard ability. I really like doing this if I see that maybe one or two party members had fallen and I will wait till the last minute, which is about 50% HP, so they have time to respond and make their way back to the crystal. This situation in particular, I have been in for very long, intense battles and knowing when to pull in and pull out to get your MP back up was integral, as well as utilizing the potion kits when you get below 50 percent hp that drop in the arena in just the right time can really sway the tides of battle the last rule is a toughie because it becomes an all-out war and whoever is left standing in the crystal and achieves greater progress wins now essentially you're at a stalemate and whoever gets just everyone out of the crystal and gets a little bit more progress wins. I actually don't run into this one too often. It's more situation one or two that comes up as usually one team has made more progress than the other. The main thing I see here is usually when it's a 
even progress split, I see a lot of teams grouped together, which can be a big no-no because you're just setting yourself up for a Warrior's Primal Rend or a Machinist Knockback or some other group bind or stun. And that being said, that is usually a big problem I see in this PvP game often is too many people are grouping together in the matches which allows people to aoe stun and limit break you now that we've covered the three situations i really hope these have helped i'm really enjoying crystal conflict a lot and these are just the main problems i see in pvp that not enough players understand over time and how to achieve victory Hopefully this will help raise your win ratio more in Crystal Conflict. If you want an entire overview of Crystal Conflict, make sure to leave a comment down below so I know people are interested in it, as well as if you would like to see PvP job guides. They're a little bit more free flowing and more general, but let me know if you have any interest in those as well. Make sure to limit break through that subscribe button down below if this video was helpful, and if you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.